Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Game of Thrones podcast. I am your host, Carmine of Red Team Review, and I'm joined here once again by uh, Preston Jacobs, and we're going to skip that intro because... Um, yeah, let's just get into this because the trailer just came out. As always, we're on SoundCloud and iTunes, all that good stuff. Leave us a review there. Also, I just want to give a heads up to everybody. Preston and I are thinking about, heavily thinking about, live streaming more. And, uh, so be on the lookout for that. But, um, yes, so Preston, the trailer came out. And, in short, I thought it was a pretty good trailer. It hyped up. I saw your breakdown of it. We'll discuss that <laughs> a little. But, um, what did you think of the trailer? Um, it, it, it was a good, exciting trailer. I think it's, you know, they don't have much to work with because, I mean, not in a sense that uh, there's not going to be a lot of action this season. I think there's going to be nonstop action, but I don't think there's that much story, mm. you know, like, so, so, so the different channels, whatever, who are going scene by scene, trying to figure out what's going on. There's not much going on. Like we know really that there's going to be some big battles, you know? Mm -hmm. And the one thing I, I pointed out in my breakdown is that it seemed that they took like scenes from like the first two or three episodes because I swear there's going to be like two major battles going on this season with only six episodes. Yeah. I mean, like episode one introduction, episode two, maybe the big battle, episode three, the aftermath of that big battle, episode four, everybody's like licking their wounds, episode five, big battle, six, the finale, biggest episode we're ever going to have. That's going to wrap up the big battle and where our characters at are at after that big battle. So I, I don't see them doing more than two battles. But right. the, the trailer heavily focused on the Battle of Winterfell. Right. I mean, I think we can kind of guess that just on the position of the uh, of the White Walkers and the, and the Whites and, and where our characters are, you know, that that they're heading south. We're going to have a, some huge, huge battle at Winterfell. We know it's probably not going to go well for our, for our protagonists. And then there's going to be a second battle. And we didn't see any scenes from a second battle, it seems. It mm -hmm. seems that everything was from this first battle. And, and it's funny, too, because in your video, you said how, uh, how they should have uh, put up more, like, fortifications. Yeah, though, though some people were, were, were trying to say, like, well, we don't have a full view of everything. Maybe there is you know, dragon glass everywhere. Remember there's catapults with dragon glass and spikes with dragon glass. It's dark. So we can't really tell, you know, maybe all the arrows and spears all have dragon glass. Maybe it's just raining it. I don't know. I would assume all the arrowheads are dragon glass, but I, I think the reason like there aren't like dragon ga glass made fortifications is because I don't think there was enough time for them to be made. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and assume there aren't a lot of, you know, blacksmiths, that are, are are able to work with this type of thing. Maybe you need like specialized professional blacksmiths. Who knows? Um, but uh, I, I'm gonna go ahead and assume like the reason that's not the case is because there wasn't enough time to do it. Even though it seems yeah. like there was a lot of time to, for it to go down, considering like all the jumbled, you know, time jumping. I'm gonna go ahead and, and give them the benefit of the doubt and say there was enough time to set up all these fortifications when they were just working mainly on weapons. So because I so think the weapons is where it counts right now. So in the book, um, Gendry's, uh, the, the guy that Gendry worked under. Tobomot. To, Tobho, yeah, Tobomot. He was the only one in Westeros who knew how to work Valerian steel into new shapes. Um, so he's the one that, that breaks apart ice and melts it into uh, Widow's Whale and, and, and um, uh, Oathkeeper. Mm -hmm. And um, so... You know, there there is some speculation, I, I suppose. I always say these things like there is some speculation. No, I, this, it's just me. Uh, but <laughs> I speculate that perhaps this is something taken from from the uh, the book that Gendry might have some some special knowledge on on how to work um, Valyrian steel. Well, I hate to break it to you, but um, Tobomont in the show does not know how to work Valyrian steel because in season three. Was it season three or season four? I think it was season four when Tywin was having the swords made. He specifically tells Jamie that he had someone from Essos come in and do it. So that, in the that, is, that is, you're, you are correct, yes. Mm -hmm. So in the show, Tobomont 
does not know how to, or as far as we know, does not know how to use it. But we do see Gendry in the theor- in the in the trailer, right. and he's alive. So at least we got confirmation on that. He's alive. Tormund, uh, Dolores, Ed, and Barrack, they are all alive. For, for I um, that, those I would guess that the show is just gonna make it that working Valyrian steel isn't that isn't that hard, or at least adding <laughs> bits of adding bits of obsidian into your steel isn't that hard. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's that's essentially what's gonna what's going to be the case. But but I did like the trailer's like atmosphere for the first few seconds because it puts in that like uh, that little sense of horror which I like. When mm. when you do when you're dealing with the white walkers you're essentially dealing with like frost zombies and essentially and I, I do like the sense of horror we're getting that that you know Varys looking over seeing if something's coming, Arya running through the halls. And I got to say I did get some sense of satisfaction seeing Arya's like cocky attitude like completely like just just done. Yeah, it's funny that they presented it backwards, though, right? Like mm-hmm. they have her, bef- they they show her running, and then they show her after, um, you know, talking about how she she's looking forward to meeting the face of death, and it's you know, it is her getting getting uh, schooled, you know, like oh, you're gonna be that cocky, and then, you know, you don't know what you're facing, but the, you know they reversed it in the trailer, which is kind of funny. If you go back and see all all of Arya's uh, confirmed kills. They're usually from people who weren't suspecting, like who weren't expecting her to like to take them down. You know, when she kills uh, Marin Trent, like he wasn't sus- he wasn't expecting mm. it to be a random girl. When she kills that Frey guy who was talking shit about her brother being dead, he wasn't expecting it. That uh, in season one, at the very last episode, when she kills the stable boy, she you know stabs him and she doesn't even know she did it. Like almost every single person she's killed, they were not expecting it. And uh, yeah. I think the only person that she dueled was the waif, I guess. But she, Kinda? it was only because it was in the, is in the dark. Mm-hmm. In, in fact, the only piece of evidence that, that Arya is a good fighter is her sparring with Brienne. Right. You know, you know, Brienne, Brienne, we know is a really great fighter because we know that Brienne beat the hound and the hound is a really great fighter. Um, but the only piece of ev- evidence that, that, Arya is any good at anything is the fact that she was sparring with the with Brienne and it seemed like they were well matched. Well, but, to be fair, let me let me cut in there. To be fair, yeah. the Hound kind of lost to Brienne because the terrain was kind of uneven. Not only that, but he had a festering wound. Remember, he got bit mm. by the uh, by Biter, I believe the guy's name was. So, uh, I'm trying to think of. When they met Biter, when they met Rorgan Biter in the show, didn't they just stab Rorgan Biter and they fell yeah. over? Yeah, 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 it's pretty much I'm trying it. to remember, you know, now in the book, the Hound is hurt at the end, at the end at the crossroads um, by, by Poliver. Um, but I'm trying to remember, he, did he take any wounds at that, at the, at the, um, and at the crossroads. I don't think so. I, I, I really don't think so. I think that was the beginning yeah. of season four, I think. I may be wrong on that. Either season four or season five. I don't really remember. Uh, it might have been season five. five yeah, I so remember. I guess I guess he has no reason to lose to Brienne, except for maybe maybe you could say Terrain. But, terrain. you know, Bri- Bri- Brienne's a you know, really great fighter. Mm-hmm. Of course, but like, it. like, like on even terrain, like in a in a duel, like we saw with Oberyn versus the Mountain, I really think mm-hmm. like the Hound might might overpower her maybe a little because I think he has more. Brienne has like she's tall and she has that strength, but I think he has like that savage, like he. he I think he has more experience, and I think experience trumps all. Hmm. But but yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, Frederick. Continue uh, about Arya and Brienne and how Arya only really well, fought Brienne. Right, I mean Arya. Ar- I mean, it's funny because Arya never had any any uh, real. I mean, except for I, I suppose, except her water dancing training. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a few lessons of that back with Sirio. Um, she had no training with her sword. She she just did staff training with um, with the waif, and all of a sudden she comes back and she's she's really good at at fighting. Well, to be um, fair, if you could see, if you could somehow increase your brightness all the way up to, to like two hundred percent, you could uh-huh. see in the trailer that at one point she's like twirling around with like a spear or some shit. So, yeah, I did see her like spinning around, water dancing esque, you know. So it looked, it looks like she's remembering her her, her serial training, but that serial training was years ago, and mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know if it went for very long, but nonetheless. 
I was almost gonna ask you. I was almost yeah. gonna ask you like if your screenshots of, of the trailer were like like a little lighter, cause goddamn, dude, goddamn. Oh, that's, it was dark. It was dark. What the fuck is with Game of Thrones and like and and the Battle of Winterfell, which is gonna be one of the the coolest battles in, in the show's history. Um, that all that's, in the dark. <sighs> it's gonna it's gonna. Do you remember? Do you remember the battle between Theon and and Euron and the, you know the Greyjoys on the on the on the, the sea battle at night? Mm-hmm. How we saw nothing. Like what right. was going on? Like nothing. We have no idea what was going on. Like my, I have no memory of that. The only sea battle ever in the show, and and before anybody brings up the Blackwater, it wasn't really a sea battle, like ship to ship combat. It was more like Stannis invading. Um, but no, we've we, the only sea battle in the show's history, and it's completely in the dark. You see nothing, yeah. and and I will say, I will say, people say, oh, it wasn't the Blackwater memorable. Actually, think back to the Blackwater. The things that are memorable about the Blackwater. Um, are the speeches and, 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 and like Cersei and, and Sansa in that room together. Mm -hmm. Um, like you, like before they go out, that's very memorable. But what, what, what do you really remember from the battle? Like, I kind of remember that they made Stannis like for some reason lead the invasion on land. And, and I kind of remember him, but it was all in the dark. Like, you don't really remember that much. I remember... You remember, you remember the part where the, the wildfire explodes. Yeah, you there, remember like, Davos' yeah. son getting killed. Like, that's very memorable. You know, <laughs> you remember the fact that Davos has a son? Oh, shit. Well, I mean... Somebody has such, to. Yeah, it was, it was... I mean, it was it was such a moment of, like, him looking over at his son and his son looking back and then the, the wildfire exploding. Mm-hmm. But that was that's a but that's a bright scene, right? So you, you, I kind of, like I remember that, but I don't remember like the the hand to hand combat very much because it was just dark and muddy and all that hand to hand combat stuff is forgettable too to me. So essentially, we, we remember the beginning where the explosion happens and like the ships are on fire yeah. and Stannis leads the attack, and we remember the ending where uh, Tywin comes in and says the battle is over, we have won, and then the, yeah, the, the great yeah. ending song. Yeah, so, all that's remember. Yeah. So, I mean, the Battle of Winterfell, that's the one thing I'm going to hate about this season, that it takes place in the fucking dark. I hate that shit. Um, Game of Thrones, it, when it comes to lighting, it's not good. As someone with, like, eye eye problems, like, yeah. I, need, I need glasses to see far away, but I also need to turn the brightness up on my screen to, to see this crap because I don't have, like, one of those... Forty thousand dollar TVs because there's I think I think it's called HDR where you mm. can see like in the shadows or whatever like something like that you know what I'm talking about yeah yeah I, I don't I, know if you have I, a TV like that but uh some of the new TVs because I went TV shopping recently some of the new TVs have it and I I can't afford those like you know like twenty thousand dollar TVs with it so yeah to those of you who have it please send me screenshots please <laughs> you know record it for me on your amazing TV um. <laughs> One thing, one thing, and this isn't this isn't Game of Thrones specific. So, but so it's a, but in general, they like Western cinema um, is pretty bad with fight scenes. Oh yeah, and the, and the reason that they're they're pretty bad is is that every time a punch is thrown, they usually cut away Ugh, uh, to the other perspective and then show a person flying, so that right. you never really show contact. Which is why like Jackie Chan movies. Were, were so great because you actually see people fighting and punching and taking hits. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it seems so incredible when, when you see that because you're, you're not used to it. In Western cinema, you, you, you know, they, they show one person throwing a punch and then they, they cut and they, then they show somebody, some guy flying and you never actually saw contact. Um, and so Game of Thrones does the same thing, you know, with, with sword play, you know, People are swinging swords and there's crunching, but you don't see anything. It's just a bunch of jumbled mess, and that's the, that's the way Western fight scenes are, and it's unfortunate. Um, and you know, so that's one of the reasons I just yeah don't really. Well, most kung fu movies are like care. that. I think that's why kung fu movies like found a place in the in in the U.S. Because I don't think I talked to a lot of my European friends, and they're not really like big on kung fu movies, but Americans love them. Americans yeah. go crazy for them, and I think it's because of the whole like you know. Like, Americans love action movies, but, yeah, like, what you say about, like, cutting away, there is an element of fakeness to it. But with those uh, movies from China, like, all the kung fu stuff, you can't fake that. Like, that. Those punches look really good, and they look real. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I, you know, I wish, I wish it were like that, but you, I guess you can't, you can't do it with, with, with actors who aren't actually trained to fight, you know. Right, <laughs> right. But, you know, uh, which... no, so, 
the trailer, you know, we get a lot of... It's essentially the first first part of the trailer is like horror, and the second part is which is good, and the second part is preparation. We see everybody preparing, you know, Gendry, mm-hmm. the whole blacksmith thing. Uh, Jorah Mormont is there. He's like I guess the commander of one of the defense forces. Brienne is there on the front lines with Podrick, of course. Um, who else? Jamie's there for some reason. I don't fucking I don't J- know, yeah know yeah. What he's Jamie's do. Jamie's there. Gray Worm. Grey Worm, of um, course, always he needs to be there. John is going to be on the front lines. But you know what you don't see um, hmm. in the whole uh, Winterfell battle scenes is any dragons. And in my video, I say how I believe John is going to keep the dragons back a little. Because he was there when the Night King took out, uh, I always get this dragon's name wrong, uh, Viserion? Yay. Is it is Viserion? Yeah. What did I used to say? Uh... V- Viserion? V- v- Viseron. I think I said Viseron. Yeah, Viserion, something. right? Yeah, Viserion or something. So, Doesn't so. matter. You can pronounce it however you want. I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not a stickler for pronunciation. I know. I know you're not. But like you know, in the comments section. I read that shit. And uh, Jesus Christ. Christ. But uh, no, the, he saw when the Night King was there and took out that dragon. So I'm assuming John is keeping the other two back in reserve for just in case purposes. Yeah, it seems so weird though to like you know have everyone die like <laughs> so that they can save the dragons mm-hmm. like the whole point of having dragons is so that people don't die right mm-hmm. uh, i well, mean the dragon successfully killed a lot of zombies true and it's funny too because in the entire trailer we don't see the night king uh but we do see i guess an- another white walker riding in the horse because they're always the one on horseback yeah that's the assumption right mm-hmm. that that dead horse is going to be a white walker but uh, yeah, that's the one thing I'm not looking forward to this fight being in the uh, this fight being in the dark. And I also think that uh, for the, the Winterfell Defense Force, I think their backup plan is to just set fire to the whole thing, which is crazy because I think for like two seasons they spent they spent all uh, most of two seasons, mostly the Boltons, rebuilding Winterfell. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, it, I think and considering like Sansa's like we need to we need to get our home back and all of that. Like, what were they fighting for? Right. Um, you know, in that season, because they weren't fighting for Rickon, right? Because Sansa thought that Rickon was just going to be dead. I mean, John was fighting for Rickon, but Sansa, what was she fighting for to get her home back? And then John is, and that's the irony is John is going to blow it up, right? Like they're just going to burn. They're going to burn Winterfell down. And well, by the he, way, this is not spoiler for anybody who's worried because in the trailer we do see Winterfell on fire. We see a bit of uh, Jamie in the which, which I think it was Brienne or Jorah. I can't tell. Short hair, yeah. but we see in the back Winterfell is burning with Jamie also in the in the in view. Winterfell is burning. The Hound a little bit in the back. We see Winterfell is burning. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the so one of the things that I said that if I were trying to defend against a, a zombie horde, I, I would le- lead them into a forest and then start the forest on fire. Right. And have, and have, I mean, so it sounds like they're, they're actually kind of doing a similar strategy. They're going to lure them into Winterfell and then they're going to start Winterfell on fire, mm-hmm. you know, and try to, try to kill them all somehow. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> the one thing I did notice about the trailer, well, cause I saw your video twice is uh, we get like three moments of people looking up at dragons. And I know that's your favorite <laughs> moment. It's your favorite moment. I just think it's just a waste of time. It's just such a waste of time. At this point, like like every Game of Thrones trailer, if you go back, it's almost like a checklist of things they got to put in the trailer. You know, the, the a dragon yeah. breathing fire into the camera, check. Yeah, that was me watching your video and I was like, oh God, you're yeah. so right. Like every trailer has got to be a dragon breathing at us. Every trailer has got to be someone usually, you know, giving us a monologue. A lot of the times it's Tyrion or, or Dav. It's usually a secondary character. Tyrion is a main character, but it's usually a secondary character like Varys or Davos. And it's usually mm. about coming together. We need to band together and fight this crap. Um, and then there's always the obligatory Tyrion scene. A lot of the times he's just sitting there with a cup or he's looking up at something all amazed. That's always in there. Check. We got to have one of the very good looking female protagonists all sad and just, you know, we just get a close up of their face and their good lips. And mm, mm. so, so there was very little, there was very little Tyrion in the, uh, in the trailer. Yeah. I noticed that too. I, I wonder what that means. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and assume, well, because the trailer is mainly like the Battle of Winterfell, like a good, mm. like I would say like 80% of it is the Battle of Winterfell scenes. Yeah. What is he going to do? Like, I'm kind of stumped at um, what the p- other plots 
are going to be, namely Cersei. I mean, you kind of know that, okay, they're going to have some sort of plot of Theon trying to rescue yeah, Yara, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, but, okay, the, the Golden Company is going to arrive, and then Cersei's just going to receive them, and then is the idea that they're going to lose at Winterfell, and then the, the final battle is going to be Cersei and the Golden Company with, like, the, the leftovers, like, joining her, and that's going to be the last battle? So what I'm thinking is uh, Battle of Winterfell is going to go down. Uh, they're going to lose spectacularly. They're going to fall back, and I'm going to go ahead and assume that Cersei is going to have the Golden Company come from behind, pick off the uh, the Stark... The, I'm going to call them the Alliance. Pick off the Alliance. <clears throat> the Alliance of the Living. And um, that's, what I'm, that's what I think her plan will be. But I also think that Cersei... She's in a weird position. So this is what I wanted to talk to you about. Um, so audience, there is some minor spoiler incoming. Um, if you want to go into Season 8 completely in the dark, which I understand, please skip to... 2642. Because it's about... Uh, it's about Euron. Uh, the actor spoiled some things in, in, uh, during his Entertainment Weekly uh, photo shoot. But, um, so, did, did you hear about this? Yeah, I mean, I watched your video on mm -hmm. it, but yeah. So essentially, uh, the actor, God, what's his name? <laughs> pillow Asbak, Asbike, As Pillow. I say, I say Pillow Asbak, but um, it's it's yeah, it's Pillow Asbike. I don't know his. If if, whatever, you, if you listen whatever really closely, if you really listen really closely, you can hear a bunch of Swedish people get really pissed off. But no, oh, God. Uh, <laughs> But no, he revealed that uh, Euron is blackmailing Cersei. Now I don't know where that came from because I don't remember. I do, I do not remember that in season seven. Yeah, I mean, what can he blackmail her with? Like, so, or what's so his here's definition what of blackmail? So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking because we read the season seven leaks, and a part of the season seven leaks was that Cersei was supposed to have a miscarriage. Uh, yeah. She did not have that in season seven. So I'm thinking they're probably saving that scene for season eight. And I'm going to go ahead and assume that Euron knows about this. And Cersei is also planning to maybe offer the leader of the Golden Company some type of marriage thing. I don't know if the leader of the Golden Company would be Connington or Fake Aegon. But I hope it's Fake Aegon, you know. You know, maybe a bastard or something like that. Because we did cover the Blackfyre Rebellion in the well, history they, they of the Well, they say they say the leader is going to be Harry Strickland. Did they say that? Yeah, they, they, they hired someone to be Harry Strickland to be mm. the leader of the Golden Company. So I'm thinking maybe Cersei is going to offer Harry Strickland some marriage, uh, maybe to you know get him more on her side beyond just you know fighting against you know this this and that, staying in the Seven Kingdoms and you know becoming her personal army. Maybe mm. maybe that's what she's offering him, and maybe Euron you know knows that she can't have kids anymore, which is a deal breaker. A queen that can't have kids, like you know, like mm. so maybe that's what he's doing. Mm. I don't know, uh, but. Uh, yeah, blackmailing her. That that came out of left field. And I'm the whole time I'm thinking, is there even time for a blackmail plot? I don't know. I mean, it it's amazing to me how much time they seem to be wasting. When I'm sitting there going, "Oh my god, there's only 6 episodes left. How 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 are they going to, you know, do this?" And mm -hmm. then and then you see, "Oh my god, they're dedicating so much time to nothing." Like you can see that there's there's going to be a like a John and like John hanging in the crypts. Like some more love scenes between you know Grey Worm and and Missandei. Like mm -hmm. you know you we see all that time is gonna be wasted on that. We you know there's gonna be uh, a a Gendry Arya scene. Like well, first off we need we need our Arya John scene, mm -hmm, and then we need we need our Gendry Arya scene, mm -hmm. and then you know they need to give Davos at least one scene, and then they need to give. You know, Jamie and Brienne another scene. Melisandre needs to get some screen time too. She right, barely Melisandre, got screen time last scene. Right. We need to do something. You know, we need to have Varys and Tyrion talk for a scene, and then you start adding up the scenes, and you're like, "Oh my god, we're running out, running out of space." We could do this yeah. all in episode one. Come on, like we can I guess. do. I, I read the IGN article that they said that there's going to be like one continuously long battle throughout the entire episode. And I just just thinking about that is is crazy. I don't think we've had that since Battle uh, of the Bastards. Battle was... of the Bastards. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, Battle of the Bastards. That was one giant battle episode. But we yeah, also we had that, a battle yeah. of fire and then the battle of ice. 
two different well, the, ones, but right, it was same episode. Same yeah. episode. Mm-hmm. I I think you know the the Battle of the Bastards was 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 about fifty percent. I mean, the action of the Battle of the Bastards was about fifty percent of the episode. Mm-hmm. And then there was build up and Danny uh, in that episode as well. But it was it was a good it was a good you know twenty five minutes, thirty minutes of of just battle. Yeah, this trailer was weird. I mean, it, it hits most of the checklist that we've seen for previous trailers. But you're right, there's no Tyrion. We get very little of Bran. It's mainly like the characters currently at Winterfell. We get Cersei a little and she's drinking. You you notice that, like, you know, that she was drinking. So what about the baby? You know, miss, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Miscarriage, it's mm-hmm. sad, yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, Harry Strickland, uh, do me a favor. For the audience who haven't read the book, tell me who Harry Strickland is for the, the Golden Company. So Harry Strickland is officially the the uh, the commander of the Golden Company. Mm-hmm. Though we often associate it that the real brains is and the real heart of it is John Connington. Right. But but Harry Strickland is is technically the the leader. Um, so they kept that the same. But um, you know we kind of think of the real the real leader of the Golden Company is either Aegon. Or or John Connington really, but but uh, but um, is it confirmed that John Con is not in in season eight? Um, I don't know if it's confirmed that he's not, but but you know when they did casting calls and things like that, the I know that Harry Strickland was was the uh, was confirmed as a character, mm-hmm. while there's no confirmation of John Con or or Aegon being there. And the Golden Company was mentioned before, I believe, in season four, episode one or two, when Davos was talking to Stannis, and Davos is like, well, we need to hire, you know, let's get the Golden Company, and Stannis is like, the Golden Company? Oh, no! Uh, oh, we can't have sell them. swords. <laughs> yeah. We, we can have douchebag pirates who want to rape queens, but we can't have sell swords. Oh, what's wrong with you? Yeah, yeah. We have to rely on House Good and House Mud. I believe that was the now. The thing is, is I do. I wonder if it will play into if they get into the history of the Golden Company. I wonder if they're going to get into um, that they that they have some sort of loyalty to. um, I mean, Targaryens. You know, like I I understand that that they really have loyalty to Blackfires, but black black but Blackfires believe that they are the real, you know, Targaryen. lineage you know so if we had 10 episodes i would i would i would expect them to do that but with six episodes i doubt it i think harry strickland is the only character that they'll give us uh to make yeah. some book fans i guess somewhat happy but you guys are never going to be happy come on let's be honest so you, you don't think they're going to mention you know that they that they really have loyalty like they might turn on cersei is what i'm saying like you know when cersei's going to command them to attack john and danny and they might say well you know, we were we were we were exiled um, for our loyalty to to like true Targaryens, but you guys are the true Targaryens or something like that. You know, something cheesy like that. That could be why she's all upset. You know, drinking wine alone in, in the in the in the hall. But uh, I, I don't like I said. I, I don't think we have enough time. We might have, uh, we might get like a history and lore about them for the Blu-rays because you know the Blu-rays history and lore always offer a great chance for any person who's never read the books to come in and understand this like for example um yeah even though we never got oswald went in the battle of uh the tower of joy scene he is still mentioned by jamie in the histories and lore so we may get a, a history of the golden company in the histories and lore and they'll maybe mention the whole blackfire connection but i doubt we're getting it here it'd be interesting i would love to see john con because varus once again histories and lore season three kind of yeah. mentions john con um, as being exiled, former Hand of the King guy. So, but I highly doubt it. I, I was actually, I didn't know about Harry Strickland and them only including him. Yeah. So, oh, so, side, side, um, uh, thing. I was, I was in a, I was in a discussion online about unpopular opinions that you have on the book series. And so I was, th- I, I was thinking like, what unpopular opinion do I have? And I was like, you know what? My un- unpopular opinion is, I think all of the new characters are better written than the old characters. Mm. Yeah. So I, I really believe that John Con is a better character than like the original eight, you know? And I think, um, you know, 
Aaron is a better character than the original eight. Victarion is a better character than the original eight. Victarion is super interesting. I I do like Victarion, but I feel like what makes Victarion interesting is his history with Euron. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but he's just, he's also just, it's, it's fun. It's fun to have such an evil protagonist um to be True. in the to be dark it's like cersei cersei is a new one and she's it's she's so much fun but so i wouldn't like, call cersei evil i would call her you know a little you know like mm, mm. i don't know cersei, cersei's pretty evil cersei's pretty freaking evil and crazy in the book she's in the book i would say evil. she's crazy but evil i i feel like that's pushing a, just a tad she she pushed her friend out a well <laughs> oh come on who hasn't done that come on stop it <laughs> she let she let kyber and Take off a, a woman to dissect and experiment on. She she wanted she wanted Arya to be killed. Come on, well, once again, who hasn't ordered Kyburn to like dissect? Come on, at this point, it's just like. A... All right, fair enough. But no, no, you you make it you make a good point there. And uh, John Con, um, John that's Con the thing. It's in. really I just I I love like we only have two John Con chapters. I think they're great chapters. I think John Con is a, is is a fascinating character. Um, really nuanced and interesting and it's too bad it's too bad he's not he's not around it's the same it's too bad that aaron isn't a character it's too bad victorian isn't a character um who cares about ario hota i will admit that ario hota is a very poorly written character he is not great but <laughs> but um uh you know I, I i really like i like the the asha chapters a lot yeah they're good I, you know you know i like i like uh I like all of the new characters quite a bit. I like Ariana. You make it. You make it actually a good point about Victarion, because because I would say he's a little he's a little evil, um, but yeah, you're right because the evil characters are fun. I I do like seeing yeah. that and seeing things from their perspective. Like I would have loved the Joffrey chapter or maybe because everybody wants the Night King chapter. Eh, I kind of yeah. want a chapter like just you know from Ramsay's point of view when he's when he's you know doing his thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and and Aaron, Aaron isn't evil, but he's so deeply flawed. You know, he's so he's got so many complexes. You know, uh, from being abused and his his deep sexism and his and his 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 uh, piousness and all of this. It's mm-hmm. just uh, he's a fascinating character. But so the, I don't know, like, but it, yeah, it's too bad that all these new characters were cut because they were there wasn't enough time. So. Yeah. Like I said, I, I said this before. I'll say it again. Game of Thrones could have gone on for like twelve seasons, maybe not twelve, maybe eight seasons. Not eight. I'm sorry, <laughs> ten seasons. I feel like is the is the is the golden number for it. Ten seasons, <laughs> ten episodes across every season. Um, but I feel like Dave and Dan, they're getting like tired of doing the same thing every fucking year. Which once again, I would say take a break. Every year you take one break. Every, like, you know, season one, 2011, season two, 2013, uh, 2013. Mm-hmm. you take that break in between. That's what, uh, that's what, uh, Westworld is doing. Yeah. Well, Westworld is just, I guess it's just so hard to film and, and get all those actors together. It's going to be place. even harder to film now that some of the set burned down during the California wildfire a couple months ago. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, I, I, they are changing the location though, I guess of a lot of the st- because so much, I, I imagine for the next season, a lot of it's going to be taking place, you know, outside of Westworld. But mm-hmm. I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll see. We'll see. But the but uh, back to the trailer for a little bit. Yeah, I mean, once again, the trailer was hype. Uh, like even I, I thought it was great. No, yeah. Uh, apparently, this is the only trailer we're getting for. Oh, season really? Eight, which I find that very hard to believe. But at the same time, I get why because there's only so much you can show in the trailer after it gets a little right. boring With, without it getting spoiled. Yeah. Because you know, we're getting so much in so little time with only six episodes. I mean, you got to wrap up like hundreds of characters, not hundreds, but dozens of characters. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm expecting, well, it's fun. It's funny though. Cause it, it, on another, on the other side of it, I understand why they don't need to do it. Cause I mean, who doesn't know about Game of Thrones? Like, who doesn't know it's coming? Mm-hmm. It's like these people are like, why does the milk industry like advertise? Like, we all know about milk, <laughs> you know. Like, but it's the same thing. Like, we all know, we all know that the uh, the new season's coming. Like, don't worry, don't worry, we got it. Yeah, but teasers <laughs> and, and I, I would say I would like some clips and teasers. Those hype up the show. Like, it reminds you. Yeah. Yeah. And but, the only reason we know Game of Thrones is still here is because there are 4,000 throne YouTubers uh, constantly putting red arrows in circles all over the place. So how can you not 
No. Fucking, you know what I'm fucking saying? Red, ar- red arrows and circles. Red uh-huh. arrows and circles. I saw, a cir- like, I saw a circle, like, somebody circled one of the dark shapes that was chasing after Arya, and they're like, oh, who could it be? And you're like, dude, it's just a fucking white. And they're like, oh, could, like, a, a dead Stark have risen from the dead? And you're like, you really think they're going to have, like, Ned, like, come out of his freaking stone tomb and chase after Arya? No. No, they're not. They're not fucking gonna do that. It's just a fucking white. It's just a random fucking white. That's that's, that, that's something I wanted to talk to you about. I'm glad you brought it up. Um, oh god. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't think that any of the dead Starks in the crypts are gonna, you know, come out rising and uh, attacking everybody? How are they, How are they gonna get out of their caskets? True. Or, or, ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. Is it as ridiculous. ridiculous as the ice dragon inside the wall? Yeah. That's there's no I, ice dragon inside the wall. I remember you you were ripping on that last season. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But um no, uh the whole Arya and before we close this up, what a lot of people don't understand, as I put in my video as well, is that fighting the undead is really like it's a really weird and obviously no one has any like, you know, there's no real life interpretation of this, of course. Yeah. But uh but if you think about it for a minute, fighting undead against these people from medieval uh, medieval times, they have no imagination. Like, you know, who, who's going to think of something like an undead fighting you? But you have to think it from their perspective. Fighting the undead is really demoralizing. I remember reading um, World War Z by Max Brooks. It's a great, mm. great science fiction novel about what if the zombie apocalypse actually happened? How would countries realistically uh, meet this threat? And during the Battle of Brooklyn... Uh, soldiers are fighting zombies, and these zombies aren't wearing like normal clothes. They're wearing hospital, you know, gowns. And at one point, soldiers are shooting at the zombies, and that one guy shoots at a zombie's head, and it's still coming at him, and he starts freaking out, like, "Oh my god, I thought you," should... because it's possible to shoot someone's head and miss the brain. Yeah. So yeah. he's freaking out. He's saying all this stuff. Everybody else is freaking out. It's it's very demoralizing, and that's why I think like Arya is freaking out here because I don't think she's used to like you know stabbing people with the pointy end and like having them come back at you. Yeah. So the rules, the rules of zombies always change uh, from movie to movie. So obviously in the original night of the living dead, like George Romero zombies, Mm -hmm. you you, you need to destroy the brain. But then uh, the return of the living dead zombies, any part of them will keep animating, even if you destroy the brain. And that's the same as our throne zombies, like any part of them will keep going. Um, they don't, they don't need, you know, like he just had his hand, right. And they, and they, uh, it, and they cut off the hand and it was still moving. And so that's, that's pretty, that's pretty demoralizing when any body part can come after you, you know? Um, it's also really, some of the zombie movies is also really demoralizing when, or like walking dead, when any dead person comes alive, you're like, oh, God, that means this is never going to end. Mm-hmm. Even if I kill all the zombies, people are going to still die, and they're still going to come back. Right. And it'll never end. The one thing they haven't really established in The Walking Dead is if any anybody who's who's born after the apocalypse is infected with it. Yeah. That's something they yeah. haven't established. And can we really call these zombies zombies? I mean, can we really call the whites zombies? Because... I think in, in order for there to be zombies, you have to establish the rules of zombies, which is if they bite you or scratch you, you turn into one of them. Right. I mean, here we don't seem to... Ha- yeah, there's none of that. I mean, there's the... These ones, it seems like any dead body can be animated by, like, a mothership white. I mean, white, mar- mothership white walker. And then... If that, yeah, I guess they established now that this, if the White Walker dies, all the the bodies fall to pieces. Mm-hmm. All the dro- all the droids collapse. <laughs> that, that's yeah, all the droids. Yeah. Episode one, Na- Naboo fights. Yeah, but it's everything. It's it's freaking. It's the it's the Avengers too. I mean, you so know, you would think the... you would think they would like focus mostly on taking out the Night King. Right, that's what they should do. Mm-hmm. Focus on the White Walkers. Yeah, and so. Um, I mean, and I think that's what's going to happen in the Arya scene. I'm sure she's getting chased by a whole bunch of whites, and then she'll she'll kill the White Walker, and then they'll all collapse. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure that'll I'm sure that's what's going to happen. <laughs> <sighs> Preston, this is it. This is the trailer to the final season. Any thoughts before we wrap this up? Oh God. Um, 
I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm going to be most interested to see what's going on with, with, with Cersei and Theon because those are the plots where I'm not sure really what's going to happen. I mean, I kind of know that Theon is going to get in a fight with Euron and rescue his sister, but um, I don't really understand what Cersei's going to be doing. So I guess I'm going to be interested in that. Like, what, you know, there's there's going to be several scenes. I mean, I'm, we see at least two scenes with the, with the Golden Company, mm-hmm. so... You know, there's, she's got to be doing something with them. It's too bad that they just look like Unsullied, the Golden Company. I mean, I will say I like their armor. Their armor looks looks pretty sick. And from behind, if that was Harry Strickland that we saw from behind, he looks like a discount Jamie Lannister, like the Diet Coke yeah. version of Jamie from yeah. behind. That's but then, I, I, but everyone everyone is like, you know, in formation, like Unsullied. You know, the, mm-hmm. inhumanly so. It's just, uh, I don't know. So. We'll see. We'll see. I'm looking forward to that. I mean, we, we kind of know what's going to happen otherwise. We know there's going to be a big battle, and we know it's not going to work, you know? There has to be two we big know, battles, we, at least. Yeah. We know, we, know that a lot, we know that a lot of people are going to die. Probably Jorah. <laughs> Damn, Jorah? Really? I think, I'm thinking Jorah's going to sacrifice himself to protect Danny somehow. Yeah, I mean, Danny looked really sad in the trailer. I'm assuming it's because Jorah's dead. <laughs> it's, and or Grey Worm. Mm. So Grey Worm and or Jorah totally gonna die. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm thinking Grey Worm goes down. I would like Grey Worm to survive because he's one of those. He's not even a secondary character. He's more like a background character in a sense that they gave like a glorified storyline to. Well, they need they need something left over from from Essos, mm-hmm. right? Like Grey Worm, and Miss, Grey Worm and Miss Sandy are all. I mean, yes, we have soldiers, you know, one through ten thousand, but like. You know, from Essos, the only characters we have left are, are Grey Worm and Missandei. What, what about the Dothraki adventures. horde? That's what I'm saying. Random soldiers, <laughs> sure, but like, you know, the only the only ones that the only ones that we know are those two. So, someone in the comment section was saying when when uh, there's one thing we didn't speak about. And I, I'm glad I, I I didn't forget. So John and Danny writing dragons. Obviously, John's gonna write Rhaegal and Danny with Drogon. Someone was saying how. Uh, Maybe they're writing off. I think they tagged you in on Twitter. Maybe they're writing off to go help Sweet Robin. <laughs> <laughs> there is supposed to be a scene. There is supposed to be a scene where where Sansa goes to meet Sweet Robin. Really? Yeah. Where did you hear this? So, I didn't hear this. Uh, I I I read that there was a casting they, that someone spotted Dino. Um, I, I forgot the, the the Sweet Robin's actor's uh, last name. He's a Brazilian kid. That's all we know. That's all I know. But um, Dino, let's see. You don't. You don't I gotta look this you're up. You're okay. You're gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. <laughs> Forget it. He's your favorite character in the books. You're gonna get it. All right. I mean, I'm, I'm probably not even getting his first name right. Um, it's. Cause I, I wonder if it's not even Dino. I wonder if it's something completely different. You want me to find um, it for you? Lino Fat Lino Fascioli. <laughs> See, I got it wrong. You're close. Lino, not Dino. Damn, he looks completely different. He looks more Italian than Brazilian. God damn, what happened, dude? But no, continue. But you're positive he's he's he's. Uh, Brazilian? Yes, Brazilian British. He looks more Italian than any British oh, person see. I've ever seen, or Brazilian person. But go ahead, continue. So they spotted him uh, on. They set. spotted him, I think, with I think they say someone spotted him at like an airport with with Sansa and Brienne, mm. with Sophie Turner and Gwendolyn Christie. Right. So, I the one thing I would really hate is if for us to end this show without seeing at least Edmund Tully. Uh, Alaria is still alive somewhere. We got to see Alaria. I got to know what happens to all the Seven Kingdoms. What's going on with with the Reach? What's going on with Dorne? Dorne's probably in chaos right now. They have no leader. Um, they no, they're def- they're never they're definitely not going to show Alaria again. I don't think they're going to show Edmir. Um, I, I we're not going to see the other five Sand Snakes. Uh, uh, Illyrio is not going to come back. See, that, that's I mean, what really if- pisses me off. There's so many characters out there that. You know, either kill him off or, or bring him back at least one right. more time, you know? Peace and prosperity. I mean, there's a chance that, like, at the ver- like all of a sudden, 
this this you know Dario shows up with with some sort of mm-hmm. force of people from Essos like like Melisandre is supposedly bringing back people right she's got to bring back you know red god followers or something she's got to do something well according to the uh, tease from her actress uh, uh, her, her 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 whole thing is she's on a mission quote unquote so I guess a mission from God mission yeah. mission from the red god but uh, uh Preston let's wrap this up guys thank you so much. Uh, for watching, uh, once again, there was, wasn't really much to the trailer, except, you know, certain battle scenes. I like the mood, the tension was good. Um, but yeah, just so you guys know, by the way, we do alternate between channels. People were asking me, like, you know, we haven't uploaded in a couple of months. We have on Preston's channel. We're covering Fire and Blood, and we're going to do at least one or two more chapters before Season 8 hits. So definitely uh, check it out. If you're following me on Twitter, I always post it up when Preston uploads. Um, so yeah, we also have a Game of Thrones podcast channel on YouTube, link to that below in the description, some of our older videos all compiled onto one channel. Um, but yeah, uh, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Preston, thank you for joining me for this episode. Anytime. See you guys next time. Have a good one.